resident in Madrid and I'm going to present you a couple of cases that I hope you enjoy. Present you two different cases with different diagnoses but similar histopathological findings. The first case is a 20 year old man with personal history of psoriasis who presented to the emergency department with erythematous plaques in both, in both armpits, as you can see in these images. In the periphery of the lesions there were multiple non-follicular pustules. Gram stain and microbiological tests performed were found to be negative. A biopsy was performed as well, and in the histopathological study, intraepidermal pustules with a heavy infiltrate of neutrophils, as you can see in these images, were found. Finally, a diagnosis of pustular psoriasis was done. The second case is an 80-year-old woman who presented to the emergency room with a one-day history of generalized pustules involving trunk and extremities as you can see in these images, these clinical pictures. The neck was involved as well. And as uh, personal data of interest, she had started amoxicillin five days earlier due to a respiratory tract infection. As in the first case, gram stain and microbiological tests performed were negative. A biopsy was done as well, and the histopathological analysis showed these subcorneal pustules with a rich infiltrate of eosinophils in the papillary dermis and around the blood vessels, as you can see here in these images. Finally, a diagnosis of acute generalized exanthematic pustulosis was done. Well, the clinical approach of pustular lesions is quite rich. First of all, we have to determine if they are localized or generalized lesions. We can face as well infectious or inflammatory entities. The cases here presented were generalized lesions in which an inflammatory etiology was suspected because of the negativity of the gram stain, the microbiological um, tests, and uh, well, the, the cases themselves looked like inflammatory entities. So the differential diagnosis should be done with the uh, dermatosis of this group. The most important ones to consider are the pustular psoriasis, the IgA pemphigus, the acute generalized exanthematic pustulosis and there is another entity which is called subcorneal pustular dermatosis of Sneddon Wilkinson which is thought to be part of the spectrum of pustular psoriasis and IgA pemphigus. There are many other entities like the amicrobial pustulosis related to autoimmune diseases or the erosive pustule dermatosis of the leg, or the multiple pustular eruptions of the newborn, which can also be considered, but uh, due to the uh, less frequency of appearance and, well, the presence of, of these, these diseases are only present in newborns, we didn't consider them for the differential diagnosis. So finally we are going to discuss about these three entities. When are we going to suspect a pustular psoriasis? Well, there are some clinical clues, for example, a personal or familiar history of psoriasis, an intense affection of palms and soles, and we always have to ask us as clinicians, we always have to ask for triggers, like drugs. It is very typical after the withdrawal of steroids or other drugs used for the treatment of psoriasis. Infections, pregnancy, in which 
uh, the pustular psoriasis of, of the pregnancy is called impetigo repetiformis. And there are also some histopathological clues that may help in the diagnosis. The main finding is the intraepidermal pustule. Here, in, when we are talking about pustular psoriasis, um, it is called the spongiform pustules of Kogog. We may also find psoriasiform acantosis, more typically in older and persistent lesions. And there is a heavy infiltrate of neutrophils in the papillary dermis and epidermis, probably heavier than in other dermatoses that may look similar or with a similar histopathological appearance. It is also typical that the, there's an absence of eosinophils, which is going to help in the differential diagnosis with other entities. Another one, the acute generalized exantomatic pustulosis, should be suspected if, uh, well, in probably in elderly patients compared to the pustular psoriasis, and it usually starts hours or days after the intake of certain drugs. There are also some rare cases related to infections. And the temporal criteria is important because other drug eruptions usually have a longer latency time. There are non we in the clinical in the physical examination we find non-follicular pustules and in some cases positivity for PATS test or some in vitro test may help in the diagnosis. The histopathological findings here include subcorneal or superficial intraepidermal pustules, and typically there are eosinophils in the dermal infiltrate, as we, as we could see in the second case. It may look like a very severe dermatosis uh, at, a, at the first sight, but for example, our patient, this is the patient we presented in the, in the second case, only with topical steroids, uh, the lesions were solved in five days time, I think. And finally, the IgA pemphigus should be suspected in elderly patients in which there's not uh, usually a clear trigger and it usually has a flexular distribution. Histopathologically, we have two, mm, two types, two different types. On the one hand, the subcorneal pustular dermatosis type, in which we find subcorneal pustules with a mild acantholysis. And on the other hand, we have the intraepidermal neutrophilic dermatosis type, in which we have intraepidermal pustules. The diagnosis is done with the direct immunofluorescence. In the subcorneal pustular dermatosis type, we find positivity for IgA in the upper layers. And in the intraepidermal neutrophilic dermatosis type, we find positivity for the IgA in the direct immunofluorescence throughout the entire epidermis. This is an image of an IgA pemphigus mm. in which positivity for IgA was found to be positive, well, was found in the entire epidermis. So as conclusion, uh, subcorneal R and or intraepidermal pustules uh, are an histopathological finding which is shared by multiple entities, both inflammatory and infectious. And we have to take into account that there are some clinical and histopathological clues that may aid in the diagnosis, as well as the direct immunofluorescence, which is quite important and give us the diagnosis of IgA pemphigus in case of positivity. That's all. I hope you have enjoyed this video, these two cases, and I hope it, it was hel helpful for, for you to go through this differential diagnosis again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.